What's up, what's up? Let you guys come in here. Uh, we can do our conversations. What's going on guys what's up what's up so just want to have a, a few minutes to let some people or people get on here in the room uh where's everybody from i definitely love to hear you know people give a shout out where they're from that's what's up good morning good morning good morning india is in the house cali philly atlanta that's what's up chicago dallas texas germany Hampton, Virginia, Auburn, Canberra, Chicago, so swell, South Carolina, Philippines, yo, definitely, what's up, what's up? Oh, South Africa, what's up? Good deal. Well, I just want to make sure I take advantage of uh, either the time and the opportunity we have here, and I don't want to waste anybody's time on this Saturday morning and for some Saturday night. Uh, thank you guys so much for hopping on here and uh, deciding to do conversations with me. I do this on Saturdays because I want to be able to connect with you guys. Um, and I just like, you know, having conversations outside of me just playing all the time, whether that be, you know, a music question or you have any other kind of question. Today is kind of a bittersweet day because this is the last time I'm going to be doing a live from my apartment here in California in L.A. I'm in the process of moving everything up and next Saturday, well not next Saturday, but next Friday, they're coming to pick up all these boxes that I got in here. So it's a bittersweet moment. Been here for seven years in this particular apartment. A lot of great history, a lot of great songs, a lot of great tutorials, a lot of great you know things that I've taught over the years have been done right here in this space. Um, I remember getting a lot of my first calls from my first big gigs in this space. So it's a kind of a bittersweet moment um, but I'm excited about moving officially to my house. Um, bought a house, um, and now I'm officially going to be moving and transitioning there. So I'm grateful for that. So let's go back and look at some of these questions. I think we already got a couple questions in here. Um, just watched your video, my first R&B guitar video. Sweet. All right. You still going to be in L.A.? I'm not going to be living directly in L.A. I will be. I will be by coastal. Right. I'm going to be living in Atlanta because um, I bought a house in Atlanta, um, but I will be by coastal. So once the market, not the market, but once the um, pandemic is kind of, you know, simmered down a little bit, some of the artists that I work with and play for um, that are here, still based here in LA, I'll be coming back and forth to like do rehearsals or stuff like that, whatever. But majority of my time will be spent in my house in Atlanta. All right, how do you figure out the chords of a song. There's a Justin Bieber song and it feels impossible to find the right chords for it. So what I do typically when I'm trying to figure out the chords for a song, I listen for to figure out what key it's in. So I'll try to find the bass notes. I'll listen to the bass notes. And when I hear the bass notes, then I see like if I'm shaping that chord, if it's gonna be a major chord, if it's gonna be a minor chord. And based upon that will determine like what kind of chord that I'll play for that progression. So I use a format and a formula that I do all the time to make my playing easier for me to, to kind of process as I use the major chord system, right? The major system, major key, I use a number system. And that's associating every uh, song with a major chord. So I'm able to decipher like, okay, what key am I in? I'm in the key of E flat or E or G, G flat, whatever it is, A flat, whatever you want to call it. And then that way I'm able to use the same format and formula to get consistency in my playing and how I sound. That's what I do. Oh, thanks for all the congratulations. I appreciate it. Arpeggios versus scales. They're two different things that I use them for two different situations. So, I mean, I use both. So they're both necessary. Hey, I'm still waiting on you to go through Wasted by Summer Walker. Um, so if you're a member of Carrie's Camp, then you could see I use that song um, to kind of describe and to demonstrate a couple of different things. But that's mainly for my campers. So... 
I want to go ahead and let the people know that are on here. If you're not already um, a part of my online school community that I have and you're 18 years or younger, ask your parents first. But I have this online school um, called Carrie's Camp. And um, it's an extensive school where we go and we take you, like, if you're a beginner, we can get you all the way to an advanced level. We have lessons for beginners, intermediate, and advanced. And you have me as a mentor, as your teacher, that's really going to show you how to play guitar without any limitations. The stuff that I give you here on, on YouTube is kind of like a sample size, but we do more in depth and it's really going to show you the nuances of how to play. So that website is K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com for those that want to know. Um, let's go back. All right. That was a Summer Walker thing. Um, Atlanta is the greatest says, will you be doing clinics or classes for side hustles out there? I don't do side hustles, but um, what will happen is I'll give them my staff. And if it makes sense, then then yes, we'll do clinics and classes. I do clinics and classes all across the world, but they have to make sense. Um, that's a part of what I do. I'm at a place now in my career where I'm more about passing the baton to the next generation and not necessarily trying to play all the gigs. Um, I've done my fair share of gigs. I've played a lot of major gigs for a lot of major artists, but now I'm in a place where I want to teach uh, the next generation so the way they can go ahead and, you know, grab the mental and get ready to kind of um, walk in their, their fulfillment of their dreams because I know what it feels like. I mean, and I got started late, you know, for me playing music um, professionally because I was in the Army for eight years. And then when I got out, trying to do all these different things, going back to school, um, did insurance, personal training, all types of things. And then eventually one day I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to just cash in on my dream and just see if it works. Because, you know, a lot of people were just saying, you got a lot of ability. You could do it. You could do it. You could do it. And so I saved money and I came out here to L.A. And God really opened a lot of doors. And I was really fortunate to play for a lot of major artists that I know everybody doesn't get the chance to do. But I vowed that I was going to give back. And so I'm at that place in my career um, that I want to give back. Let's go back. I saw a few more things. Thoughts on the Fender Jaguar. Uh, the thing that I will say about any guitar, and I like the Jaguar because, I mean, I have a Jazz Master that's kind of got the same kind of configurations, is you got to find something that feels good to you, right? And I changed out the pickups in the guitar that I had because the pickups were great. They were great. I just was looking for something a little bit uh crispier and then cut a little bit more when i played overdrive so sometimes you have to like you know try out the different kind of pickups so i put lambertone um, p90s in it and it definitely took that guitar from here to here so uh, i love jazz masters and i love jaguars they're, they're great guitars lost the passion a few years back and i still noodle around but i stopped believing in myself have you ever hit a wall yeah, I think all guitar players at some time hit a wall. Like, that's just natural. That's that's a common thing that happens. What I tend to do sometimes when I feel like I'm plateauing or whatever, um, I'll just go listen to different playlists, like on Spotify or on um, YouTube, and I'll find myself being inspired. And I'll just keep going through songs until it's something that hits me, where I'm like, oh, I want to grab my guitar to actually to figure out how to play. There are times that you're going to get to a point where you just feel like, man, I just I don't want to do it anymore or whatever. And what I tell you, what I challenge you to do is, is go back to like in your mindset and find the, the reasons why you fell in love with playing guitar. Find out the reasons why you did it and then like stick to those reasons and hopefully it can kind of rejuvenate you and get you to the point where like, you know what, I want to play again. Because everybody has moments. I just got the Marshall Code 50 amp. Uh, it's a hell of an amp. I just feel like it's not this as soft as I would want wanted to be super rock and roll fill. Right. Marshall makes a lot of amps that are definitely um, fit in that vein. You're probably gonna have to really massage the tone to really find a good, sweet, um, kind of soft R&B kind of sound, but it can be done. It's gonna be a little bit more challenging than most amps, but it can definitely be done. I used to play a Marshall, I believe it was the JCM 800 uh, for a lot of R&B gigs, especially like outdoor uh, stadium type gigs or whatever. So it can definitely be done. So it's, it's, it's definitely doable. How do you become a producer? Um, you have to create the whole track, right? 
and then you have to find an artist that will actually likes what you're doing. So being a producer is like being an artist, like in the sense of a painter, not an artist in the sense of a vocalist, but like you're creating um, a masterpiece that another person will want to jump on and be a part of. So it's a, a thing that can take a long time to kind of master You may be good at one particular aspect. So then I would say join a production team, you know, I've done that for years. I've been part of a lot of different production teams because I wasn't strong in playing this or playing that or putting all of it together. I was strong in just playing guitar, so I joined a production team so I can kind of help create the picture together with other people. How long does it take you to learn? Um, how long does it take you to learn how to play well enough from the time you begin? All right, so I started learning how to play guitar when I was 11. And throughout that whole duration, I would say probably like a good three years, I got good enough to play in church and I got good enough to play for a couple quartet groups. I was still very raw. I didn't know the, a lot of the fundamentals. I didn't know um, the names of my chords. I didn't know the names of what key I was in. I just could hear, I had a good strong ear, right? It wasn't until Probably after I went to like high school that I started to realize that, oh, these, these chords that I'm playing have names. These notes that I'm playing have names. So I started to kind of formulate all that things. It's been a, it's been a while of mastery. You, it takes it, you know, a time for you to continue to work on your craft to get better and get better and get better. I've been playing for over 20 years and I'm still learning different things in order to get better. I'm learning how to put different phrasings together. I'm learning how to put different kind of chord progressions together. So it's not one of those things where you just stop. It's just that you have to ask yourself, what is it going to take for you to be successful in and what you're trying to gain as a guitar player? Your success level may just be like, oh, I can play a couple songs and I'm good. Or your success level may be like, I want to play for artists and you got to kind of challenge yourself to get to that place. So it's like, if you're trying to play um, professionally, you have to work a little bit harder than those that are not trying to play professionally. Okay, that's a question. Hey, just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your service. I appreciate it. What software um, are you using when you're recording? I personally like to record in Logic. I know there are a lot of people that like to use Ableton. Uh, there's some people that like to use Pro Tools. Now, when I'm doing some different things with different kind of producers, if I'm doing like kind of like a collab thing, whatever they decide they want to use. If I'm not hosting the session, if I'm hosting the session, then I'm, I'm going to use Logic. But if they're hosting the session, then it's whatever software that they want to use. I know, like I said, a lot of people that use Ableton nowadays. There are a lot of people that use Logic and there are a lot of people that use Pro Tools. So it just depends, you know, whatever you want to do in order to create the picture and paint the picture. Can you recommend uh, a good, affordable, left-handed guitar? I think Iconic Guitars just posted something. So if you go look at Iconic Guitars on Instagram, they just posted this really dope left-handed um, HSS. I'm sure you could probably find some strats, some Fender strats that are probably like some good models. Maybe I think PRS does some stuff too. Um, I don't know what your budget is, so you just have to determine what your budget is. But they, there's some good brands out there that make some really good left-handed guitars. Hey, Carrie, do you focus on soloing over the chords, or do you just strictly vibe on a scale uh, type feel? So. When I first started playing, I used to just focus on like soloing. That's all I wanted to do. If you want to be able to like, and soloing is cool, right? But nobody will necessarily all the time understand what you're doing as far as like the meat of the song. So it's really important to get a good bass and structure with chords, right? And then you want to find a good relationship between the chords and the soloing because soloing only plays the melody but if you're like just doing that as a primary thing it's hard for you to get any kind of work or anybody to want to accompany you because you're just soloing the whole entire time so it's it's i challenged myself for like a year i wanted to really work on my chords i wanted to get really solid on my chords so i would sit with keyboard players because keyboard players can expand like different kind of chords that they can play they can stretch out and i was like i want to make my chords be that full that lush so when I decide I still want to solo, it's just like I have both of the best of both worlds. 
So I would challenge you to really just focus in on like learning the chords and then using those chords to kind of give you different pivot points that you can learn to solo from. That'll make it a little bit easier for you. Carrie, have you ever played with a keyboard where the keyboard is just really bad and you have to carry the song a lot as a rhythm guitar instead of playing lead lines? I don't play lead lines. Like, so I need, I played a lot of different shows. I played a lot of different gigs and a lot of different church services with keyboard players that are not that strong, right? That was one of the reasons where I wanted to get stronger in my chords. I don't play a lot of lead when I'm playing a show anyway. Um, the only time that I'm ever going to play a lead line is when they tell you like, okay, it's programmed to the show. This is where you step out and do certain kind of lines. I'm always playing rhythm. I'm always playing the chord behind the song. That's why I got so strong in it. That's why I get hired a lot of times because people are like, man, your chords are so lush. It sounds like I don't even need a keyboard player. I can just use you. There are a lot of times I get stuck in like either just acoustic shows by myself or just where I'm playing like uh, three pieces where it's just me, a drummer, and maybe a bass player. So it's really important for you to find yourself really digging into those chords. That's why I, like, I push that so much when it comes to Carrie's Camp. Um, for those people that, that are part of that community, I have a video chord library to try to show you a lot of the chords that I'm using. And I try to simplify it and showing like certain shapes because if, for me playing for so long, I realized that you don't have to make guitar, learning guitar and playing guitar very complicated. You can dumb it down and when I mean dumb it down, put it in such a way that it's simple for you to remember and retain it and play it and duplicate it. So I really focus on certain kind of shapes and I focus on certain kind of voicings. Then the more comfortable you get, then we get to stretch out a little bit more and do different kind of voicings. But some of the, the what I consider the basic voicings or whatever are lush chords that still give you that same kind of oomph whenever you're playing. So. Or do you plan to offer a Carrie's Camp lifetime membership in the near future? Um, yeah, I'm going to talk to my staff and we're going we're gonna to talk about that. We're going to um, talk about maybe offering some more lifetime. So that is something that's definitely um, on the table. Hey, Carrie, do you focus? No, we already talked about focusing over chords. I realize that a lot, a lot of gospel guitars have serious chops. Uh, for example, people like you. What do gospel guitars practice? All right, so there's a gospel is such an extensive genre. There are a lot of different things that you got to practice, right? You got to practice your praise bump chops. You got to practice being able to play rhythm in a song and have the kind of feeling, kind of touch and presence. There's a lot of nuances in gospel that I think a lot of times in my experience that most of your church players or your gospel players are a lot more versatile playing on major gigs than Sometimes guys that maybe don't have that kind of background because you're not asked to do a lot of different things. Um, when you play at church, you're asked to do a lot of different things. You're, people will sometimes sing the same song in different keys. Your ears got to be strong. Keyboard players a lot of times will want to change and augment different things. They'll call out numbers. You got to be very versed in that. So having a gospel background makes you a lot more versed and a lot more, um, a lot more depth. So you practice a lot of different things. You're practicing scales, you're practicing the numbers, you're practicing riffs, you're practicing solo, you're practicing this, the, um, the ability to improv. I learned improvisation at church because there's a lot of times that like, you know, the singer stops singing and then they'll be like, all right, band, take it away. And the keyboard player or the organist will be looking at you like for you to carry the melody. So you gotta have a strong enough ear and remember lyrics to like carry the melody. So there's a lot of stuff that you learn as a gospel guitarist that you won't learn from other genres because they're, they're not asking you to do that. So then when you decide you wanna cross over to like R&B, to pop or to do whatever, you have a lot more depth and girth when you're playing because you just, you've been asked to do that stuff from like, from childhood for a lot of people that play at church. All right, do you have a video or chord vibrato slash tremolo from a fixed bridged guitar? Or do you have a whammy bar? So I have some guitars that have a whammy bar and then I have some that don't, right? And so the ones that don't, the vibrato that I use is in my strings, or in, it's in my hands, but you gotta be sensitive enough to not overdo it, 
But I'm saying like overkill the vibrato because that could just take it. You're going in and out of the note. Like you want to be right there in that sweet spot. So it takes time to really perfect and find that sweet spot. So it sounds tasteful. It sounds warm. It's just not overdoing it. I've seen a lot of players who don't understand that they got to adjust their bridge. They got to get it to float. If you don't get your bridge to float, then you're applying too much pressure. And it just sounds like it's just really bad. It's really annoying. Um, so you got to get your bridge to float. If you have a fixed bridge, then you have to work on like getting the vibrato on your fingers and like learning how to be sensitive enough with your string placement. Do not overdo the strings and not bend so much that it sounds like, oh, you're out of key. You know, it's one of those things you, you just got to, it's a technique that you got to perfect in order to make sure it sounds right all the time. Hey, Carrie, have you ever thought of taking a deep dive slash studying and teaching on the past greats such as Cornell? Uh, no, the reason why I don't do a deep dive and, and study and teach on the past greats only simply for the fact is like right now I'm trying to teach what's current for the guys that are trying to learn. Like I'm not doing a master class on, oh, we should study this particular person because most people are coming and trying to learn from me, so I'm trying to give them that stuff that they're learning, that they want to learn from me. Um, we all glean different inspiration and, you know, are inspired by some of the people from the past, but like right now, a lot of people are coming and be like, yo, how do you do this? I want to learn how to do this from you. So that's why I'm focusing more specifically on the things that people are trying to learn from me. All right, how do you remember what each melody, what each note in the melody sounds like when you're playing lead? Sometimes I hear a melody, but I forget where to find the notes. So I end up playing notes. <laughs> I know not, not what I hear. So what I try to do, what I tell all guitar players is you got to do it. It's important for you to learn the lyrics. Like you don't have to know words for words, but you need to know the cadence, right? So when you're playing these different songs, you know enough to where like you know the song well enough to where you can kind of navigate in and out of it don't just play a song to where you just like well i'm just focusing on what i got to do and i'm not listening to the singer you need to know the lyric the lyrics enough to where like you know how to play the melody of a song because the lyrics guide you they're, so, they're like a roadmap that, that leads you specifically how you're supposed to play so you gotta know the lyrics i cannot stress that enough for guitarists that are trying to play behind artists that are playing in bands that are playing in church that are playing for um, anybody uh, at the local level that happens to have you like accompany them, learn the lyrics. It's gonna make your job that much more simple. So when you do get called out to solo, you know the melody. Or you'll find yourself kind of just veering off and being like, oh, okay, cool, I hear the changes. And it's just, it's uncomfortable. One thing that I try to teach is how to become comfortable on the instrument. Because if, you, if you're uncomfortable, it's just gonna cause a lot of tension, that unnecessary tension that you don't want. So learning how to become comfortable on the instrument is what makes the difference. What do you do um, when you lose your way playing lead and how do you re rescue uh, the situation? All right, so what you gotta do so that way you don't get embarrassed on stage, your ear really has to be strong. So you gotta be able to, to know how to like flow within the melody of the chords, right? So a lot of times you may start out soloing and doing like da-da-da-da-da and hear a change. Even if you just take a break and kind of fall out and then come back on the next note or whatever, that's okay. Like, you don't want to make sure your face doesn't do like, oh, like have a OS moment. Like, oh, sh like I just messed up. Try to work on your facial expressions because a lot of times people are not that keen on if you make a mistake in the crowd. People in the band may know whatever, but like you can make it intentional. You can fall out on a note, like, I don't know where I'm at. Okay, let me fall back in or whatever. Like, there's certain ways to do it. Or, like, you could do long notes. I tell people all the time, a lot of times you're soloing, you don't have to do, like, a lot of different notes in the progression. You could just do, like, long notes. You could just hold a chord, like, ding, and ding. Like, you can hold the note and kind of make it just have that presence. Like, it was intentional for you to do that. Even though you probably didn't know where you were, you can make it sound like it's intentional. All right, what are your tips for improvisation on a chord change? I mean, do you have like licks or arpeggiation for like chord sevens, minor sevens? It all depends. Everything that you do, there's no like go to. This is what I do every single time. It depends on how the progression goes. It depends on it depends on like the nature of the progression. Um, there are sometimes that like 
I will maybe, depending on how the phrasing is and the whole progression will decide and will determine if I decide I want to kind of change out a chord depending on the voicing or do a lick around it. A lot of licks that I try to do sometimes are off of the two chord in a progression because the two is, especially when my root note is on the fifth string, the two is right underneath the six and the six is kind of where we get the minor pentatonic from, right? So I'm able to do a lot of things off of the two that can jump right into the six. So that's kind of like one of my fail safes if I just have a moment, I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to do. Let me throw something out really quickly. Or if I want to come up and develop a riff that's really kind of quick in a small window, that's where I'll kind of go and like kind of throw out a lick really quickly. So I always listen to the progression. I let the progression dictate how I'm going to play. I don't have like, well, this is what I'm going to do every single time. I really let the, dic the, the dictation of how I decide to do a movement will be based upon the progression. Some good stuff. All right. Is it bad that I want to learn to play by ear instead of using music theory? No, it's not bad at all. Like, it's going to make your ear very strong, but learning and understanding theory is going to allow you to communicate with other musicians more effectively, right? So if we're playing in a band, right, I can't yell across the stage uh, to you, hey, uh, play a C minor 7 Da 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 da. You're gonna be like, what are you saying? What are you saying? So like, if I'm playing, I'm like, yo, just go to the two, and I'm feeding you the notes. I right, go to the four, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you can't always try to like slide into a chord because you're trying to figure out exactly what the progression is going to be. So learning by ear is definitely a great trait. It's gonna make your ear that much more stronger, more solid. It's just gonna give you like more ability to play. But it's great to learn music theory. You got you gotta know enough to be dangerous, right? I'm not saying you got to become one of these theory snobs where you just go so in depth, you do dissertations, you don't have to get your PhD in it, but you need to know enough to, in order to be dangerous. And that's what I teach in Carrie's Camp. I'm not teaching so that you guys can go, um, my students can run off and do a dissertation, but they know exactly what, how to play. They know exactly how to use a number system, how to navigate, how if they get a gig and they got to learn like seven songs, how they can write out a chord chart and be like, okay, this song is in this key, the progression is six, five, two, one. And you know, the next song is going to be two, three, four. Like they know how to chart it out. That's what I'm talking about as far as being dangerous. You're, you know how to do it. You know enough in order to be dangerous. That's what you need to work on. I, I would suggest doing that it's going to make you have a lot more freedoms and be more comfortable. I can't stress the importance of being comfortable when you play because when you don't feel comfortable when you're playing, you're going to mess up. All right. Are Hot Rod Deluxe amps a good choice? Any amps that you recommend for that price range? I think Hot Rods are really good. Like, Hot Rods are really good. It just depends on what they're selling for, right? Uh, I tell people, if you're not looking to try to do a tube amp, a really good compromise, in my opinion, is Quilter. Quilter makes some really good stuff. I personally like the Mini Reverb 101. Um, and then there's a, a lot of different kind of boutiques that you want to look at. You really just have to ask yourself, do you want to carry something that's super heavy? Does it sound the way that you want it to sound? Or if you got something that's going to be fixated, I know when I'm doing like church gigs, I tend to time tell them like, you know, give me a DeVille. Um, or if I'm doing R&B gigs where they can't like, they can't give me a mess of boogie or they can't give me a bad cat. I say give me a DeVille because I know wh exactly what it's gonna get me. It's just, I don't have to worry about it. Sometimes Fender Twins can be funny um, depending on if it's a black face or a silver face um, twin. So I tend to kind of stay away from that even though I like the way twins are. But if I have not, if I don't, Depending on the backline company, they've been beating these amps up. I tend to not use them, so I know a DeVille, regardless if you beat it up or not, it's going to sound pretty good for the most part. How to improvise on a pentatonic scale? All right, so this is another lesson that I taught in Carrie's Camp. It's about phrasing. You've probably heard this word, like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Phrasing is conversation, right? So when I'm saying a sentence to you, I can either say it's extremely basic, like the cat ran down the hill. And it's like, okay, cool, I get it. Or the fat cat ran down the hill fast. It was like, you know, I'm being more descriptive. So when I'm playing the, the scale, I'm not just giving you like the whole pattern of dun, 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 dun. I'm picking out certain notes like dun, 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 dun. 
I'm giving you certain notes out of the scale like that are not in the same phrase and that are not in the same pattern as if I was doing a scale exercise. That's how you can improvise when it comes to the minor pentatonic. There's a lot of nuggets. There's a lot of gold in there. I was just did a live Q&A with my students in Carrie's camp on Thursday and I was expressing that. I was explaining that. Um, there's a lot of gold in the minor pentatonic scale. Most people use it as a blue scale. You can pick out various notes in that minor pentatonic and use it for R&B and it sounds completely different. You can take blues licks when phrasing them properly and placing them properly will sound like a completely different kind of lick. So take the time out whenever you're practicing those scales to just work on like different kind of uh, patterns where you put those scales together, where you put those notes together. And that's how you're going to work on your phrasing. That's how you're going to work in your conversation in order to make it a lot better and more sufficient. Let me pause for the calls right here. If you're not have already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe and then click the bell to be notified because I'm going to be doing these lives at different times. I might even hop on here to do a lesson that's outside of the stuff that I'm doing every Tuesday. So I want you guys to just be aware like, yo, you know, hey, he's dropping a video or he's doing this, whatever. I want you guys to be up on, on game. And also, thank you guys so much that have already subscribed um, for helping us get to 80,000. I appreciate it. Appreciate that so much. So the next benchmark for me right now is I got to get to 100K. Like, I'm on a mission. I need that. Like, you know, I need that. Like, people need air to breathe. I need that. So I need you guys to help me share this with your guitar buddies. Share this with, like, your guitar friends. Um, people that you feel that could be definitely benefit from um, learning uh, this particular genre. Just learning about guitar, period. Share it with your friends because I'm trying to get these numbers up. Right, so that way we can have a little bit more influence in the guitar community in the world. So, um, I'm gonna take maybe one more question, and then um, I got I got some packing to do. I got some boxes I gotta finish wrapping up, and I gotta get a few more boxes, and I gotta get my cards clean so I can ship my cards out too. So, um, next Saturday, I may not do. I'm trying to decide because I gotta see what time I'm supposed to land. I'm flying out next Saturday, so I'm trying to see what time I'm supposed to land. If I don't do a live next Saturday, then the following week I will be back on schedule. So I'm trying to see um, how that's going to work out depending on what time I'm flying. Because I'm flying from the East Coast um, to, I'm sorry, I'm flying from the West Coast to the East Coast. So I'm, I'm losing three hours. So I just got to see what time I land and see if it's actually feasible. So um, if I don't do this next Saturday, I, then the following Saturday I'll be back on. So um Thank you guys so much for like your patience and for just trusting me and my knowledge and helping you guys grow. So you guys have been amazing just for all the feedback that I get from you guys from watching some of the, the um, videos that you guys tag me in and for the videos that people share with me about them learning some of the progressions or even doing some of the same movements that I've, we've been teaching. I am totally inspired. I'm not one of those guys that's like not going to show you exactly what I'm doing because I want you to sound like me. No, I, I purposely put this information out because I want you to use it, you know. So I find it just, it's so uh, so fulfilling when I see videos of guys that are using some of the techniques and some of the um, approaches that I've been using for years. I think it's amazing um, because it's saying that like, you know, that what I have and what I'm showing, what I'm teaching, it's like you think it's, it's usable. So I really appreciate that, right? So let's, this is the last question I'm going to take for today. So what's a good tip to prevent guitar pick slippage when strumming? Um, what's a good technique? I would say um, it's trying to be more mindful and not get so relaxed when you're playing with your pick, right? A lot of times I have a good, just a good firm grip position, like I'm holding my pick and I don't get too lax with it. It can happen. It can happen. So like if you're on a gig and you know that you have a tendency to do that, now you need something you want to practice and you're work on it in your practice time. Or have picks laid out on your amp. So if you drop one, you can just turn around real quick and grab the other one and keep going or keep one in your pick guard. There's a lot of different kind of techniques that you can do in order to try to negate that. Or if you're a lead singer, I've seen some people put the picks on their mic stand and they can just grab one off while they're, while they're still playing. There's various things you can do in order to just create... Um, uh, a different kind of like plan B so that way if you drop a pick, that's what you want to do. I've enjoyed speaking with you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this time with me. Um, to reiterate again, uh, I may, I'm may i still trying to decide. I, I don't think that I'm going to do a live next Saturday. Um, 
but the following Saturday I will do one. And not because I don't want to, it's because I'm traveling to um, Atlanta and so I'm, I'm losing time and I don't know what time I land again. So just off of normal time that I normally do it, I'm like, it's probably not going to work. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, go and subscribe, click the bell to be notified because from time to time, I'm gonna be hopping on here to do different lessons. Not just the conversations we carry, but an outside of my lesson that I normally do. And if you're looking to try to do a deeper dive and you want to learn guitar even more in depth than what you're learning from YouTube, I highly suggest that you go to my website. If you're 18 years or younger, um, ask your parents. Um, the website is Carrie's Camp. That I spell it as K-E-R-R-Y-S K-A-M-P dot com. Um, and I look forward to you guys becoming part of the community. Um, so you guys have a great one. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be smart. Be safe. Um, it's a lot of stuff that's going on. Love each other. Listen, love each other. I know that a lot of us are from different backgrounds. We're from different places or whatever. And I know that some of us um, may be experiencing racism on a whole different level. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Love each other. If you have friends or people that you know that are of color, just ask them how they're doing. Um, People are hurting, and so sometimes people may not be able to convey it in such a clear way, but like I'm asking for empathy for people, right? Learn how to love each other. Learn how to um, come together. I know that there's trying to be this whole divide, divisiveness that's happening. Forget that. Screw that. Let, let's love each other. Let's, let's come together. Let's be um, friends and families. Let's stand in the gap for each other. Let's, let's let there be solidarity. Okay. So that's like my last speech. I'm not trying to campaign and tell people what to do. I'm not even telling people how to protest or how to do whatever. That's not what I'm about. But just, if you don't want to protest, if you don't want to share anything on social media, whatever, at least have a conversation and have an understanding. Um, so that way, like, you know, you can probably change your mindset. That's all I'm asking for you. Right. So you guys do real good. You guys stay safe. You guys just um, continue to learn guitar, man. Guitar is just it's a beautiful thing. So um, I challenge you to just not look at these videos just once or twice and be like, whatever. Really just do a deep dive. Get your hands in it because it's definitely going to help your playing out in the long run. All right, man. You guys have a good one.